When it comes to Star Wars creatives, we know already that nobody comes close to Dave Filoni. He is one of the glues that is holding everything together. As for now, he is one of the biggest contributors to Star Wars canon, and also we've seen that he borrows a lot from Star Wars Legends, so he, on both fronts, he is the hero that Star Wars needs the most right now. And in a recent interview, he went on to talk a lot more about not only what we've seen, but what we are about to see. We also talked a lot about a Clone Rebellion show and what that would look like. He talked on the Josh Horowitz interview that he is already finished the intro scene, the beginning scene of his movie, the Mandalorian movie. He went in depth about a lot of things, but one of the biggest things to come out of that interview is him talking about essentially what is known as the retcons we've seen from the comics to the animated versions to the animated shows and now his movie movies too, even in the live action ones with Ahsoka, we've seen that things, tidbits, are being shuffled and moved around. More notably, we remember in the Bad Batch season opener where the Kanan Jera story is kind of shuffled, so he went on to explain a lot in that podcast. This is what he actually said. I tend to look at it a little bit like Arthurian tales, to be honest, and how depending on what version you're reading and translation, they can be widely different. But Arthur is usually Arthur and does the things he's supposed to do. Those things remain true. And that's very much folktale and fairy tale type of ideology. If we tell a story in animation, or if it's in a comic, and then we bring it to the screen in a different way, we might make changes to it out of the medium, out of the bias of the person making it, but it should still maintain the heart and the important moments of what people liked about that story. He is clearly talking about maintaining George's vision true. What George Lucas created was magnificent, and and Dave Filoni is the one, the protege, to actually continue the canon moving along. We talked about canon Jarrus, how it was changed a little bit. Also, we see that with Thrawn, things are changed a bit, but borrowed from Legends too. There are a lot of elements in there, and it seems that Dave Filoni is trying to maintain everything, as I said, the glue holding everything together, albeit with some tidbits here and there. And this is why I'm hopeful for the Captain Rex story, because even after Rebels, I know that Captain Rex will have a great ending and a great follow-up after that series. This was kind of even confirmed with D. Bradley Baker, the voice behind all the clones. He talked about not only all the clone troopers and what what's in store for them, but that the future is pretty much bright with Dave and him working closely. In a recent, recent interview just merely a couple of days ago, Bradley Baker talked to The Hollywood Reporter and he went on to talk about the tantalizing clone storylines that could be further explored. Guys, he has insider knowledge. If Dee Bradley Baker is talking like this, then for sure he has talked to Dave Filoni about all of these clones knowing full well that their stories have not yet finished, not even close. So let's go immediately into the interview and then we're going to dissect it. He went on to say to The Hollywood Reporter just a couple of days ago, he said, well, it's tantalizing, isn't it? Because a number of clones are still in play, including Echo. And he has a really remarkable story. He had a uniquely challenging story to overcome with how he's been put through the ringer when he was captured and then kind of reassembled as part machine. And yet he comes out of this with this attitude of let's get back in there and let's make things better. And people really love that. So I'm encouraged that these threads are still open for storytelling. Like what happens to Clone Commander Cody? Where does Echo go? How do clones like Rex, Wolf, and Gregor end up together and then eventually end up in a fishing spaceship on a remote planet at some point? How do these things happen? Everybody wants to know because they love these clones. And love them we do, D. Bradley Baker. And you might be jumping up and down with joy because he didn't just talk about Echo. He talked about Echo mostly, but he also mentioned, as you noticed, Commander Cody. He talked about Rex, Wolf, and Gregor. So, 
you can see that the multitude of stories to be told from the clone's perspective during the imperial times, them fighting against the empire, is just magnificent. It's, it's a treasure trove for Dave Filoni. It's an invert of the Clone Wars series. During the Clone Wars, they were the main honchos. They were fighting against the Confederacy. But this time around, no man. They are the rebels. They are the grunt workers. They need to work in secret. It's a total invert of the Clone Wars. No longer do they have the almighty power of the Republic behind them. Now they need to figure it out for themselves against that former Republic, against the Empire. And the Bad Batch essentially tells us exactly that. It gives us hint as to what other clones have been up to with that finale scene, with the last last scene where an older Omega and an older Hunter are reminiscing and she leaves to meet up with with whomever she is meeting up with and I have I think I have an idea and him talking about Echo seems to actually tell us that there is tragedy awaiting us especially with Echo the sad part is that years later when Omega's grown up Hunter is older they do not mention Echo at all even Omega who departs from the island does not mention that she is going to meet up with Echo or whatever she only mentions Wrecker and Crosshair so we know Wrecker and Crosser are alive. We know Hunter and Omega are alive, but Echo is not mentioned all these years later. To make matters worse, Echo is nowhere to be seen in Star Wars Rebels, where Rex, Wolf, and Gregor are now older and meet up with Ahsoka, meet up with Kanan Jarrah's Ezra, and the rebellion is essentially starting to ramp up. So does this actually mean that Echo is dead? He is not mentioned in the finale, in the final moments of the Bad Batch. He is not seen in Star Wars Rebels and never seen again. You know, I'm gonna be candid with you guys and this is the problem that I have mostly with, the, with this double-edged sword that is going on in canon because we love these characters we want to see them go well and if the finale of the Bad Batch proved anything is that you know not everything has to be dark and yes the ending of the Bad Batch was pretty satisfying and it gave us a hint of the future that we might see these characters again probably but this is constantly happening with canon now is that we have characters that are eventually shown to be alive even though they did not participate in these major battles or major events. So the double-edged sword, of course, is as you see with the Bad Batch, as you see with Ahsoka, as you see with Cal Kestis. The answer constantly is that they were not around. They disappeared somewhere into their own sanctuary. Now, piecing this together myself by watching what the content is showing us and all of these episodes, all of these stories are essentially telling us that these people, all these guys, Omega, Hunter, Wrecker, Crosshair, Ahsoka, Cal Kestis, all these people who we do not see in the original trilogy, who we do not see in other materials pertaining to the Imperial Times, they were so traumatized by the Empire they, that they just chose to completely absolve themselves, run away, and not participate in either rebellion activities go up against the Empire, they just gave up. This is why we appreciate, of course, somebody like Captain Rex, who actively fought the Empire as we see during the Bad Batch, then he, he made a comeback in Star Wars Rebels, and depending on what you want to believe, he even participated in the Battle of Endor. 